it's time for us to discuss another discourse. And this discourse is one that I have very strong feelings about. And I am going to do my absolute best to be very fair, but I wanted to state up front that I have pretty strong feelings about this one. Um, so our, our second topic in our pride discourse gauntlet is the egg prime directive. Do, 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 do. Gender, the final frontier. Da, da. That sort of thing. The Egg Prime Directive. So, uh, for those who don't know what the Egg Prime Directive is, I am going to explain it to you now. It is a fairly new uh, term. As with most internet terms, it's hard to say exactly when it originated. But I am fairly connected in online queer spaces, and I have only really heard the Egg Prime Directive term used, I would say, in the last two years, maybe at maximum. Um, and uh, the, the Egg Prime Directive refers uh, to, uh, first of all, the term egg. It's a slang term in trans spaces transgender spaces, uh, egg referring to someone who is trans, but who is yet to acknowledge and accept that they are trans uh, and need to, you know, do something about it, basically. Um, and, and hence the egg. The egg hasn't hatched yet. Um, and the egg prime directive refers to, obviously, Star Trek, as I made the joke. Uh, the idea... Uh, in Star Trek, the Prime Directive is the idea that uh, the, the, the Federation of uh, um, the main characters of our show, the Federation, it, they're not supposed to interfere in the affairs of, uh, of, of other planets that aren't a part of the Federation. So like if there's a, uh, you know, if there's a, a you know, group of uh, a planet that has people living on it who don't have space travel and, and don't know about the Federation yet, in the, uh, in, the, in the story, you're not supposed to interact with them. You're supposed to let them, you know, continue their societal growth, uh, you know, un uninterrupted. Um, and so, of course, the Egg Prime Directive, um, the Egg Prime Directive uh, can logically be constructed as you are not supposed to interfere in someone figuring out if they are trans or not. And the Egg Prime Directive, much like the Prime Directive in Star Trek, is a subject of incredible controversy. Um, though, again, the Egg Prime Directive is, as that term, has only really been around uh, not that long, although the, the fundamental discussions around it have. Um, and uh, people have a lot of very, very strong opinions about the Egg Prime Directive, especially this year. I've noticed that um, egg discourse generally has kind of been, it's kind of been a hot topic this year. Um, most of the time, I will be honest, and I'm, I said already, I declared my bias, I'm trying very seriously to not be judgmental, but I think that a lot of people participating in discourse around um, eggs and around the Egg Prime Directive um, have, have dulled a part of their empathy, and, uh, and I think it's bad and unfortunate. Um, I think that people can be very callous and uh, not thoughtful and uh, very impatient. And uh, I think that's a mistake because it is, a, it is a complicated discussion, but also I have a pretty strong position on it. So let's discuss uh, the argument for, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the argument for the Egg Prime Directive. So, People who support the Egg Prime Directive 
um, support it because they believe that um, basically imposing an assumed gender identity or an assumed future on someone else uh, can be harmful or scary or uh, potentially uh, 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 impact their decisions in a way that is, uh, that is dangerous or unhealthy, that can le lead to undesired outcomes. The, the basic idea is that, you know, if you tell somebody what they are, um, that could confuse them further. It could make them feel bad or make them feel scared. It could impede the process of them figuring themselves out. Um, and so the Egg Prime Directive argues that, sure, you might have your suspicions or whatever, but you should probably keep it to yourself because you don't want to risk uh, upsetting that person. You don't want to risk, um, you don't want to risk making them feel confused or misleading them or sending them down a path that isn't going to make them happy. And so that's, that's the more or less the simple argument for the egg uh, prime directive. Um, people also sometimes uh, will, and not all of these, in my opinion, are like common, but these are other things that you see um, in my experience with people who, uh, uh, people who are in favor of the egg prime directive, which is... Um, uh, you all, you often see uh, people saying basically that uh, that you're making stereotypes that there's an aspect of stereotyping that goes into um, to to the process of of saying well I think you might be an egg um, and that that's not a good thing that we should avoid uh, stereotyping that we should avoid making assumptions about other people in that way and that that can even be offensive um, like uh, you know. Uh, like some people will even go so far now of course we're starting to veer into the category of where I don't think this is held by most people but I have seen this position where people have said that the egg prime directive can be um, offensive to or even uh, dangerous uh, to uh, feminine men especially um, and to uh, 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 to like masculine women um, tomboys or whatever, that femboys, tomboys uh, are, are, you know, could even experience some level of uh, erasure by this. Um, or that it, in the worst case, um, you know, reinforces uh, gender segregation by being like, well, if you do this, you must be that. So now most people, I don't think, hold that position. I have seen that position um I have seen that um, that position argued. Uh, sorry, if that wasn't clear, to clarify for some, for serious, the egg prime directive can be dangerous, or egg culture can be dangerous. Specifically, that um, what I'm saying is that that the pe the people in favor of the egg prime directive sometimes will argue that uh, um, that basically people who are um, people who are making assumptions about like saying, oh, you might be an egg that they might be uh, erasive. You know, there, are, there might be some erasure going on for tomboys and femboys and, and, and various, pe various different positions uh, on the gender spectrum. I hope that's a little bit clearer. Sorry, I recognize that we're getting, this is a little bit of jargon, but this is discourse. So it's gonna be a little bit of a process to work through it. Um, so, um, now I'm going to talk about, real quick, the position against the Egg Prime Directive. Now, the position against the Egg Prime Directive um, largely argues that uh, to, to engage in the Egg Prime Directive uh, is, to, uh, is to basically needlessly damn people uh, to an existence that there could be a solution to. Um, recently, as a specific example of this, I have seen posted on social media the idea that, like, um, not engaging in the egg prime directive, refusing to tell someone that you think that they're trans, could be, like, 
refusing to tell someone that you think that they have asthma um, while they're gasping for air. Um, and the position is ar argues that the egg prime directive overstates the harms of uh, uh, of of you know conversations about being an egg, and also that it uh, encourages people to avoid further avoid conversations about uh, uh, about gender, um, and uh, and furthermore. Um, on the further end, as we go into people who are against the Egg Prime Directive, we encounter uh, people who point out that it mirrors aspects of allegations of grooming that are uh, put forward by explicit transphobes. That um, explicit transphobes will say, oh, you know, you went on the internet and you met a bunch of trans people and they told you that you can do this and that to your body and all of a sudden you wanna do this and that to your body. Um, and, uh, and so that's one of the positions that you will see on the further end of the egg prime direct, or of the anti-egg prime directive position, which is the argument that basically some of the more, some of the rhetoric that is used by people in support of the Egg Prime Directive mirrors that and mirrors the problematic assumption of explicit enemies of the trans community. Um, and, uh, and so I can tell, by the way, right now, I have been avoiding looking at chat for this entire time, but I can tell right now uh, that chat is has a lot of strong opinions about this. And I knew that this one was probably going to provoke a lot of strong opinions. And I wanna ask real quick, I'm just gonna do a vote in chat. Here we go. I want you to vote just real quick, which position you think I take based off of what I've said so far. It is a little different than the last time. The first time, the first time it seems like the chat the first time I think the, the first time I did the vote, it seems like chat thought that I was asking them what their position was. Um, but uh, I was actually trying to gauge whether or not my description of this gave away where my strong feelings on this particular issue lie. And it seems like I've at least done a pretty good job. Uh, uh, I've done a pretty decent job. Sure, you know what? We could do that. Let's see what YouTube thinks. So... YouTube, YouTube is much more decisive on what they think, at least the people who are voting on YouTube are much more decisive on where they think I am. Whereas site chat seems to be, seems to believe at close to somewhere about 50-50, YouTube chat thinks that I'm against the egg prime directive. Okay, we're going to end that poll. Thank you for voting. Thank you very much for voting. Voting. Okay. So, let's continue then. Um, let's continue then. So, this is a topic that a lot of people feel very strongly about, and I also feel very strongly about. And um, just so that we can clarify for everyone who's in chat, once again, I'm going to state it again. The Egg Prime Directive is a position that states that you should not interfere in someone's understanding of themselves as trans. Uh, you should not, you know, uh, say, "Hey, maybe you should look into this" or anything like that. It's a, it's a, it's basically a no contact rule. It's a let people figure it out. Don't interfere. And the anti Egg Prime Directive position is one that says. Uh, that's not a good thing to do, and the Prime Directive is a, a, a piece of fiction from Star Trek. So, um, now is when I will reveal my position. The truth is, I am fairly strongly anti-egg Prime Directive. Um, and, uh, 
but that is not to say that I think uh, that I have enmity with people who are, are pro, but I, have, I want to state my reasons for believing that way. Now, uh, obviously, YouTube definitely had it, definitely overwhelmingly had me figured out, whereas uh, SiteChat was a little bit less, a uh, little bit less sure. Um, a lot of people seem to have voted, uh, uh, to, seem to have guessed my position, probably from having me had, uh, you know, pr probably from having heard me talk about this before. Um, and I want to talk about why I believe that to be the case. Um, so first of all, um, I understand where people are coming from with the egg prime directive. There is an idea that, that, uh, um, there is an idea that, you know, you know, too much can be, or, or, you know, how much is too much? You know what I mean? That you don't want to accidentally uh, participate in something toxic or hurtful or alienating by making something, you know, um, I don't know, by making something too much of an issue. And I'm going to counter that a little bit um, in just a second, but I want to say I understand where people are coming from and I understand why people would be worried uh, and not want to, uh, you know, not want to participate in something that could be hurtful to somebody else or uh, would want to stay away and err on the side of caution. However, um, let me explain a couple of things. First of all, and this is something that I think plagues the entire discourse, um, which is that the internet is allergic, to, uh, allergic, wow, Jesus. The internet is allergic to anything that even remotely, possibly, can even be construed as quote unquote cringe, okay? And that biases so goddamn much of our lives and so goddamn much of uh, how our discussions unfold on the internet. Um, people on the internet are so scared of uh, cringe that they don't even want to be seen as, um, as, as, as being adjacent to cringe. And as a result of that, it makes people, I'll be completely honest, very antisocial on the internet, and it makes people interpret things in kind of demented and weird ways. Um, the idea that, like, you could commit a social faux pas by basically being like, I think you might be, are you trans? Like, you maybe you should look into trying estrogen. The idea, or, hey, you might be trans. Maybe you'd like testosterone, you know? I've always gotten that. I mean, I could be wrong, you know? That in and of itself, the idea that that could be wrong and that you could be cringe and that you could be exposed or made fun of or look like a fool, it seriously weights, I think it weights people's thinking about this issue in a way that is just not reasonable. Um, people are so afraid of making a social faux pas or being, or even thinking about making a social faux pas that they don't think about like the stakes that are actually going on. And they also, there's this, um, there's this, not to like do a argumentum ad Tumblr post here, but have you guys ever seen that post? Uh, I think it's a Tumblr post where it's like people will spend all their time on Tumblr and then they'll convince themselves that everything on Tumblr is normal. And so then they'll be like, normalize straight people. We need to remember that straight people are can be normal, everyone. That post right there, uh, like, I feel like that's a huge thing about with the Egg Prime Directive that makes me want to rattle people just a tiny bit. I kind of, I, I resist and I really try to be strong and loving and choose the path of peace. But... When, when people go, oh my God, the, I see people talk about egg jokes and or talk about referencing egg stuff as if it's like a gender regime that nobody can escape. I'm not joking you. I'm not, I'm not kidding with you. Like I've, I've, I've watched this egg discourse unfold for a long time and I've seen the way that people talk about it. And it's almost like, have you walked outside and talk to anybody recently? Have you remembered what it's like to live in the rest of society where the rest of society is 
so violently opposed to gender questioning that it's almost unthinkable in a lot of social circles to ever even co conceptualize of gender non-conformingness in and of itself, let alone the idea that you could be trans. The, 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 the standard uh, discourse around gender in American society is the word egg does not is like it doesn't exist to these people when they think of an egg they think of biden's raising the prices it is just it is just it's it's absurd that people forget the regime of gender that we all live under the rest of our lives that because you spend a lot of time talking with other people who are familiar about these issues you forget what it's like everywhere else and all of the rest of the time the idea that like for most people let me give you an example. I'm a little bit of an I'm a bit of an extreme case, but I didn't even know about the concept of trans people until I was in college. I had heard uh, I'd seen a documentary about intersex people, but I didn't know about the word transgender at all until I was in college. That's how and I didn't, I, I grew up in a very extreme religious environment, but I went to a public school. That was, you know what I mean? Like I went to public high school and I still didn't learn about any of that at all. So it's, it's, I think that some people are informed by this by thinking that there is like a culture of imposing uh, transness on people. And that is why I do think that sometimes there people should be careful about uh, about that last aspect. Now, I don't think that most people who are who advocate for the egg prime directive are doing this, but I do think that people should take care in the way that sometimes the narrative that is told about with people who are proponents of the egg prime directive, the narrative that is told does echo of the broader culture war narrative that basically um, people can be uh, corrupted and misled by encountering the concept of transition or the possibility of transition at all. Um, I think that that can echo the narrative of like groomer narratives. I don't think it always does, but it can. And I think that people should pay attention to the, to the narrative structure of it. Um, because I do think that there's, there's, there is a, uh, this is a bias, you know what I mean? That there is a desire to, uh, meet a middle ground between an insane position, a perceived insane position, you know, the, the, the hyper transphobic, uh, you know, you know, they're, they're only woman and man and that's it. Men don't wipe their ass and women do. That's as simple as that. You know the the insane right wing position type stuff, and the uh, and a perceived extreme left wing position, and the desire is to split the middle. Which the split the middle would be accepting ninety percent of the regime of patriarchy. You have to be careful about that. Um, Niana says, "I really don't think that's a fair take." Really, I feel like I, I feel like I'm being f quite fair with that. Um, the idea that like, um, okay, let me give an example. Um, I, I have seen um, big content creators do entire segments um, decrying jokes from niche transgender subreddits about a particular popular figure possibly being trans. And being like, can't wait until you start taking hormones. And that's the joke. And I've seen people do, I've seen not just one, but many take the time out of their day to be like, this is a serious issue. And the idea, the idea that a joke on the internet on an already niche trans sub, like, you know, subreddit or website could be dangerous enough that it could impact and mislead and lead someone to not transition or to transition, those things do echo a narrative. It's not the same, but it has elements of it that I think people should pay attention to. I, I definitely think that people should, should pay attention to that.
So I've talked about how I, I, I don't think, uh, I think that a lot of the feelings that people have towards the Egg Prime Directive are informed by a desire to avoid being cringe, which leads to a overstating of harm. That's the real problem that I think is um, um, I, I think that's the real problem that happens in the egg prime directive discourse, which is that I think proponents of the egg prime directive um, sort of routinely overstate the harm and also mischaracterize what most of uh, egg related stuff um, actually uh, actually, like the shape that they actually take. And that overstated harm leads to uh, a, a demonization of, of something that is actually kind of important. When you live in a society that uh, aggressively represses and suppresses any gender variance whatsoever, Conversations around gender variance, conversations around transition, conversations around the existence of trans people, even if they're imperfect, are pretty important. And I think that the desire to further police the already policed, uh, sometimes really cruelly so, I might note, but the desire to police the over-policed um, is a is the wrong way of approaching things um and additionally to tie this all together i actually think that it's pretty goddamn important to transition if you need to and i don't think that people who aren't trans are going to be convinced ever to transition or that people who are trans are in most cases going to feel pressured uh, by someone going, Haha, wouldn't it be funny if you tried estrogen? Or going, hey, I've just, I'm, I'm just acting on a hunch here, but are you trans? Do you, do you think it'd be good for you to start estrogen? Because I know some people who could help you with that. That, the ability to do that is really important when the downside is so great. Not living as yourself, a thing which a lot of trans people spend a significant amount of their life doing, is a agonizing and terrifying process. And the reality is, the complex truth of that is that you spend some of that time completely and totally in denial of who and what you are. Almost every single trans person with very, very uh, few exceptions is going to have some period of their life where they uh, reify or, uh, or, or enforce upon themselves what has been enforced upon them by others. Um, it's exceedingly common. It's especially common in a country where a lot of people uh, have religious families that have unbelievably strict views um, on gender. And uh, uh, so I think that um, people having the door illuminated, even if it's through a joke, even if it's through a brief conversation, even if it's imperfect, people having the door illuminated for them is very valuable. Because most people don't believe the door exists. In fact, a lot of people uh, spend most of their lives being told the door doesn't exist, that you are delusional and insane, that you might be dangerous or bad for even thinking about the door. So somebody taking the time and going, that door exists, it's right there, uh, you can take it, is actually a pretty good thing. And the downside is that most of the time, the vast majority of the time, if it's not the door they want to take, they just don't take the door. The joke might, at the very worst case, be a little cringe. And the, the internet 
needs to get over its fear of cringe. Uh, cringe is not the world's worst sin. In fact, it's not even close. Uh, it's not even it doesn't even register on the uh, on the, the the you know the sin Richter scale. It's a pretty low range thing, but it but the internet being a a bubble in which perception and uh, perceive and how you are and and self perception is everything. Cringe is like it's the easiest to access universal negative emotion, and everybody is very attached on that. You know. Um, but I want to talk about one other thing before we like sort of wrap up the egg prime directive segment, which is that, um, I do believe it's possible to, uh, to go too far. And I, in fact, I have known people who do take it too far. And I mean, not just in a cringe way, um, but in a, uh, an overly aggressive and, uh, domineering way. I have known people in my life um, not many. I think I've known maybe one in my entire life. One person who took their, uh, uh, the, the idea of breaking eggs to a level of, uh, manipulation where it was, uh, not only am I, am I going to try and help you see the way, but I'm going to try and decide the way for you. Um, not in the, not in the, like, I'm going to forcibly trans you type way, but in the, this is the right way to do a transition. This is the right way to do it. You got to do it like this. Um, and even in that case, uh, even in that case, uh, I, that person, the person, the, the people that I've known, a lot of the people that they were egg cracking were trans and and are trans. So uh, that's not to say that they weren't a, a, a bad person and they, they didn't do things that were wrong and that were hurtful. They did. But uh, they were, they didn't, they weren't like, they didn't, everybody who they did that to was already trans and was struggling in their own ways. They just went too far and that person also was more broadly and generally a manipulative person. So the takeaway from that is that, yeah, there are bad and manipulative people, but they can't manipulate you into an identity that you aren't. That's just not how this works. That is an incredibly difficult and arguably impossible thing to do. Um, you know, uh... So I do think that there is, uh, the reason why I say I have such a strong position on the egg prime directive is because I think that the egg prime directive comes from a place of, it's a, it comes from a selfish place. It comes from a place of self-preservation. You don't want to be, you never want to be the person who's cringe. You never want to be the person who, uh, makes, makes a wrong guess or, who makes somebody uncomfortable. But I think that's where, it, I, I think it comes from there, from this desire, uh, it's a universalized rule that comes from the desire to avoid cringe, but that ultimately um, comes at the cost of popularizing the idea that we should just ignore uh, obvious signs that someone could be struggling with their gender and doesn't have the words or the encouragement or the togetherness necessary to make those changes. And let's just be real. Um, between me and the other trans people out there, you all have known a real bad closet case, right? We all have, okay? Some of us have been the bad closet case, okay? I'm not gonna say I'm the worst closet case, but I'm gonna say I've been there, okay? I, I fucking detransitioned at one point, okay? Um, most trans people have known somebody who was a, who was in a pretty bad case of the, in the closet and dying in there, but for whatever reason, didn't feel like they could leave. For me, um, somebody telling me, I think you're trans was a really, really big moment for me. I'm not joking. When I had detransitioned 
and was in this position of being like, nah, I'm probably not. I'm just like a fucked up person and all this shit. Someone being like, I think you're probably trans. I think you should do something about that was a huge moment for me because it was the first time that I had ever actually had unequivocal validation of what I was feeling. Like, I had had plenty of invalidation from many different sources. I had had some neutrality, like doctors being like, well, if this is what you want for yourself, I suppose we can do that. You get lots of neutrality. You get lots of negativity and invalidation. But that was like the first time I remember when it happened, I remember like the, I can see the room that I was in the first time that happened. When somebody said, yeah, I think you're probably trans, you know? Like, you should do something about that. And uh, that that changed a lot for me. So I think that there's value in it. Obviously, don't be a fucking asshole. But in the worst case scenario, the harm is not as high as people say it is. A lot of people want, uh, are, are like, oh, I find egg jokes cringe on the internet. That means we should make a community rule that says you should never tell somebody that they're trans and never interfere in the process of them discovering their gender, a process that is fucking essential. Like, being able to talk to other people about your gender is insanely, insanely important. The idea that you should just that you should emulate the Federation of, of, uh, of whatever, the Star Trek Federation and literally no contact, pretend that you don't exist at all, that's, that's outrageous in my opinion. I think that that is a ridiculous position. If you want to say, hey, uh, maybe don't be so overbearing on some people, hey, maybe don't be insensitive if somebody says that a joke bothers them, but the prime directive is just... I think it's just misguided and uh, and only comes from, it, it's, its foundation is built on an overstatement of harm that doesn't exist. And now's the part where I'm going to be a little bit mean, okay? It also, almost exclusively in America and in American online discourses, targets trans women. Okay? And don't think that I don't see the aspect of misogyny in that. The fact that everybody, uh, that every other week I have to see somebody losing their mind over jokes posted on a meme subreddit about somebody being an egg and people lose their goddamn mind over it and act like, oh, all of a sudden you, you're, these, these, these trans women, it's so cringe, it's so bad, let's blow them up all over the internet. Come on. I see what you're fucking doing. Okay? That's the, that's, that is something that is, it's so common. You never fucking see, I've never once seen somebody blowing up a, a, a post that was about, hey, maybe you should take tea. It's always these fucking cringe cat girls, whatever bullshit, they blow them up. And then of course, the thing that always happens with that, which usually the person who starts it isn't trying to be this way. But the second that it picks up any steam, all of a sudden, then you have all the right wingers on it who are looking for a new trans woman to jump on, who are looking for another validation in their goddamn message. It's fucking bullshit. And I don't like it. That's the part where I'm going to be a little mean because I don't have anything kind to say about people who uh, feel like it's a good use of their time to, to create little dog piles on random trans posters making a fucking egg joke. And I'm not kidding you, by the way. People are fucking crazy about it, all right? I prepped for this particular topic because I saw how insane people were being about it, okay? People are fucking deranged about this topic. And if you don't believe me, next time, just do me a favor. If you're one of the people who's sitting here going, I don't agree with you about the Egg Prime Directive, next time you see the Egg Prime Directive or, or any egg-related topic, check the comments, okay? And see what people are willing to say to trans women when they think it's justified over a fucking egg joke. I, I challenge you. This is my personal challenge. The reason why I'm angry and heated in this portion of the conversation specifically is because I've seen it so goddamn much. It's absolutely nuts. 
that's a great example, Sirius. Yeah, someone, so there is a, yeah, I'll use that as an example. Sirius said, is this about the Shen comic stuff? So a, a, a web comic artist by Shen Comics wrote, drew a comic in which everything was basically, the, everything was basically, uh, their character was presented as usual, except in the, uh, in the final pan, or the second to last, yeah, in the final panel of the comic, they were at their own wedding, and their character was wearing a wedding dress. Now, you could be like, ah, it's funny because the boy character was in a dress, but there's a lot of ways you can read that. And a trans woman made a joke, which said, I think they said, I give it five years. Which, first of all, that's a long time. <laughs> I give it five years. Okay. Um, that's a long guess. But they said that. And the, the, the post got dogpiled to hell. Okay? If you can go find that thread, you can go see just how hard the thread got, that, that single joke got dogpiled. Okay? for saying, I give it five years. An indirect egg joke got dogpiled so hard. Uh, let me just tell you, what was in the comments was deranged, okay? Or was it six months? I thought it said five years. Maybe you're right. Maybe it was six months and I'm misremembering. I apologize if I did a misinformation. The facts of the thing remains. Wait, so are anti-egg people cringe? <laughs> my plan, my masterstroke has been revealed. We're turning the tables. It is you who's cringe now. I used reversal. <laughs> Move everything around so that the table is turned the other way. I play mirror force. Exactly. Anyway. Yeah, so, anyway, uh, I don't, I think I've touched on everything I need to about the Egg Prime Directive in this uh, fairly laborious section, but I wanted to make sure that I was doing my best to communicate this clearly on a complicated topic that I know that people, um, uh, that I know that people are uh, very, very tense about, because people have strong feelings about the uh, Egg Prime Directive. So, um, yeah. That made sense. I had no idea what it was before. Well, like I said, the Egg Prime Directive as a term is fairly new. The discussion of the topic has been around for a while, though I will say um, the, 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 position of do not get yourself involved has become increasingly prevalent on social media and I don't think that's a good thing and I'm going to push against it because I don't think that that's the way we should be um, in a world I think it's the tumblr thing again it's like the normalized straight people like it's like come on like it's our it's it's been normalized okay Jesus Christ it's in in society it's normal to uh, basically uh, freak out if you ever think of painting your nails. If you're, if you're like a, a boy and you're like, wow, it would be nice to paint my nails. You're, so, you're, you're programmed to go, that's gay shit. I'm not supposed to do that. It's like driven into you for your entire life. So the real discourse, is it wrong to tell someone they're an egg for doing puppy girl shit? <laughs> If you're if you're a if you are a cis guy and you are posting puppy girl shit in particular, I'm sorry, but that's that is a cry for help. Okay, that is specifically a cry for help. True nuts. I I will say uh, I hate the term. E separate from the actual issue, I hate the term egg prime directive.